everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virgil here. In a minute, we are going to do an art journal tutorial from the Break the Blank page, What Comes Next series. But first, I'm extremely excited to share with you the release of my first ever mixed media digital kit, The Gnome Book. There's a link in the description box where you can go and check it out. Here's what comes with the kit. You get a one hour, 45 minute private video where I'll walk you through the project step by step. This isn't just one spread, it's the equivalent of four spreads over eight pages. I'll teach you four winning color combos that you can blend, teach you how to layer stencils, and how to compose pages. Great for the beginners. Included comes a nine page instruction sheet that supplements the video. It includes templates or tracers that you can use for the gnomes. All the materials are listed, but know you can use what you have. You don't need to buy anything beyond the kit. Sentiments are used in the kit, but not only do you get the ones in the kit, but the full Oh Gnome You Didn't kit. I've also included some digital gel prints, 12 in fact. Click on the link in the description box for more. So let's get back to this art journal tutorial. This page I started by brayering on the color. In this teal, there's a little bit of yellow, there's that burnt sienna color. And I've applied it with brayer. That gives a lovely textured background. And I admit that I kept looking at this background and thinking, how am I going to finish this? And I kept hitting a wall. And so today I decided, you know, Karen, let's just add some more pattern. When we broke the page, that is not the finished background. That is just the starting point. So let's go from there. So I'm using this Sacred Geometry stamp set from Stamperia. And I started stamping with archival ink, but I wasn't getting enough contrast. I wanted a little bit darker. I wanted to add some black to the page. So I spread the acrylic paint on my glass tabletop and I'm stamping into it. And that's giving me a darker print. Now my goal here is just to add pattern, add some interest to this textured, colorful background. And maybe at some point, this is going to give me a hint of where I want to go with this page because I don't have a plan right now. There's no focal image, there's no quote, there's no anything. So here I start, I get a little bit more paint on the stamp and you can see that dark black. I love it. When you're stamping with acrylic paint, make sure you clean your stamps. So now that I'm working it, this has the word sacred geometry on it and I'm just stamping it. I'm going in this orientation, but you're gonna see me turn the page because again, as I'm at this point, I'm not sure if I'm going to go vertically or horizontally with my composition. Now, even though I'm putting letters, the goal isn't that we read this. This is just going to be another piece of interest in the background peeking through. At this stage, I want to frame it up and see where I may want to go. So I'm using some, some of that black acrylic paint that I have out and I'm just edging it. As I said, this frames the picture or the page and often gives me an idea of where I may want to go. At the end of the video, I will do a summary of all the steps with my little technique cards. So I'm liking where this is going. I'm loving the pattern from that sacred geometry stamp, but I'm thinking I wanna bring out a little bit more of that teal. And I flip through my stencils and I grab this capricious stencil and the aqua teal paint that I used. And I'm just up adding pattern and color. I love me a swirl. And so this capricious stencil, which is new to me, has become a fast favorite. I've already used it, I think, on three or four different pages. It's a good, basic 
stencil to add to your, if you're looking for something to add to your stash. And I'll link that in the description box below. Many of the TCW products and the Stamperia products are available at Ninny's Napkins, link in the description box. There's also a link to the TCW Shopify store and Amazon. So I'm liking the addition of the teal. On this page. Now I'm at the, the, my background is really interesting. There's lots of layers. I'm still playing around with what I want. I'm taking out a stencil thinking, does this work with this? And then I end up using this stencil, another fast favorite screen view. And I'm using white. Now my goal here is to push back that background and but still have some of the stamping, some of the other stenciling peeking through, as well as the basic color scheme. Speaking of the color scheme, we are using a complementary color scheme. They are opposite each other, the color wheel. That teal is across from the orange, red, burnt sienna tones. And when you have things that are across from each other on the color wheel, you don't want to mix them wet, but they do work really well when you have different components of have both of those colors on the page. Now that I've added the white, I'm coming back in and I'm using the floating acrylic shading technique to edge the page. This gives a softer kind of faded shade to it as opposed to the using the makeup sponge. And most times that most times I end up using this <clears throat> Now I've grabbed this slimline stencil And I'm going to use it to make a border for this page. And you could do this with a lot of different stencils. What it requires you to do is mask off, block off parts of the stencil that you don't want to isolate the part that you're going to turn into a border. This one's relatively easy because it's a straight line. Then I'm coming in with the makeup sponge and black acrylic paint and just stenciling this down. Now first I do the top and bottom, the longer sides. And I'm thinking that might be all that I'm going to do. This leaves it more wide open. If I put on the other two sides, it's going to close the page in a little bit and your page or your surface is going to become smaller which may or may not be what you're going for so I stencil on the side because I make that decision that I want it going all the way around now that was really far in off the edge and I'm thinking oh I really wanted that I really closed it in I was going to leave it and then I thought, nope, you know what? Everything under here is acrylic paint. I can wipe it off quickly with a baby wipe. You've got some playing time. And then I move it a little closer to the edge and stencil that in. So I like the contrast of the black. Then I went through my stash to look for a focal image and I have the burnt sienna color, the orangey color and the teal. And I grabbed this butterfly in that teal color. It's a big butterfly and I like it. And then I thought, wouldn't it be fun to put one of these crazy dogs in the middle of the butterfly with a saying like what you see here, weird is a side effect of awesome. I'm edging the butterfly because it's rather thick paper, it's like on tag paper, and I wanted to get rid of the white, but I also wanted to kind of shade that butterfly a little bit.
I do come in later and do more shading with the floating acrylic technique, but this is more to get rid of that white edge. I'm also going to place that butterfly so it is partly off the page and I'll cut that off. This butterfly die cut, I actually picked up at the dollar store, but I think I found them in Amazon. And if I did, I'll put a link to it so you can check it out. Now, when choosing the color of the dog, I decided to go back to the original broken page and the colors that were there. We have this, I think this is quinacridone gold, but it you could use burnt sienna. And I'm doing a brush of it over top of this. I realized that I painted right over the eyes and keeping instead of keeping the whites of the eyes. So I'm going to have to come in and paint those eyes white. But I'm loving the look. So now I've taken the colors from that broken page and I've put them into the, my focal image. So the whole page is rather cohesive. I'm using white acrylic paint with my liner brush. I thin it down just a little bit, which I tend to do whenever I use my liner brush. And I painting, paint it. I want this fairly opaque, so I do come back in and put another layer on. I'm painting the nose and the collar black. I like how the diamond shape of the Harlequin stencil matches that motif in that stamp. It works together. I'm using a stylus. I'm dipping it in the black acrylic paint and just dotting the eyes. Now that's very wet, so it's going to take time to dry. So make sure it dries before you glue it down. I'm loving how that stamp, you can still see bits of the stamp, you can still see bits of the stenciling on this page. Everything that we've done, we have added interest to our page. I wasn't happy with how that sentiment was fitting, and I thought about cutting it up, but then I thought I had an option. Life's too short to be normal. And then I decide I'm going to cut that up. That eliminates some of that white, which is a look I like. Now, right now, I've covered up that bottom stamp, and I decide, you know, I don't want to cover up those stamps. I'm really liking that element on the page, so why do I want to cover it up? If it was something that I didn't like, that's often where I may put the sediment. Now that I have the basic composition done, I'm ready to glue things down. Because this is tag board, I'm using gel medium instead of fluid medium. And I'm putting it under and over. Because this is matte medium, the shine that's on this die cut gets blocked and it becomes very matte. The gel medium also makes it so that I can do some shading easily and it will take the acrylic paint of the shading or if I wanted to change the color. You could also put a coat of clear gesso which would do a similar thing. The brush I'm using here I have allocated to being used with adhesives. That way I don't wreck other brushes. Adhesives tend to be rather harsh, hard on the bristles of your paint brushes. So you don't want to use a good paintbrush. Now I'm coming back in with that floating acrylic shading technique to shade the butterfly. I'm going on top of the butterfly and then I'll go on the background around the butterfly. If you want to learn 
how to do this floating acrylic technique, I will put a link to that video where I specifically teach it step by step. It's a great technique skill to have because it really makes a difference. I'm shading around the sentiments as well. And then I'm doing the dog as well. So lots of shading. And this really takes it, makes it stand out from the background. You could use a charcoal pencil, but know that the charcoal pencil isn't permanent. The Harlequin stencil, it was a little bit too stark, and I thought I'd add some interest by grabbing my fine line applicator and adding some white on it. And I found if I go the same way, turn the page and then go the other way, it was quicker, easier, and I was more able to do a, a better job. Then I decide to dot it. This ties in with the dots in the dots of the eye and on the circle that was in the stamp. Again, we want all those components to read together. At the end, I wanted to splatter some gold. There was some gold in that die cut, and I splattered the whole thing with a little bit of bling. So let's recap. This page started by applying the paints with the brayer. I added interest and pattern by stamping and stenciling. I used the stencil to create the border for the page. Then I combined different collage elements into one fun one. This is a complementary color scheme, which means they are across from each other on the color wheel. Those are always winning combinations. I added the sentiment to the page. This time I cut it up to fit the composition. I shaded the focal image, edged the page and the sentiments. Then I got out my fine line applicator and I added some doodling. At the end, I splattered the whole page. Thank you so much for joining me. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, share my channel with your creative friends. And as always, go get creative.